Okay, so <coughs> uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us to this computing seminar. Actually, two because uh, we will have a sequence of two presentations this morning by the same speaker, by Dimitri Mikushin. Uh, from uh, the, uh, sorry, I just missed it. The uh, it's not there. The uh, um, uh, applied uh, parallel computing LLC. Excuse me, <laughs> blank. So um, Dimitri and his colleagues are working in collaboration with Igor Sakharov uh, from EPFL and Eurotech in, uh, together with the uh, six-track team in the BIMS department in making the six-track code working, in particular in the volunteer computing platform uh, Boink, which I uh, saw a little bit in the, in the approach to the announcement. So the, the idea is just to offer you today in two parts the work that Dimitri and, and his team has been uh, developing about the portrait of Fortran code into GPUs, which is quite interesting by, by itself. His legacy code is fine, it's Fortran, but still it is the code which is working, it is, has been working for years and there is no reason why to, to do different now. So what the idea is just to make the effort to make it work in as many platforms as, po as possible. Uh, now what uh, the better presentation work of, of Dimitri and uh, uh, um, again, again, and, and his company and the team uh, will be made by Igor and I will pass him the, the word in a minute. But before doing that, uh, I remind you the following, that the, these presentations, the two, will be recorded. So if you have colleagues who couldn't make it uh, this morning, for whatever reason, just let them know that it will be uh, the recording. The, it will be available in the seminar's website. It's the same place as you will find a copy of the slides later on during the week. Uh, if you have questions, and because we are recording, please use when you have the questions, the microphone which is next to you, you will have to push the, the red button, the red uh, key, which is on the panel. And like this, we can just record your question as or your comments as well as the, as the replies. Um, other than that, well, if you have uh, mobile phones, I have to do the same with mine. Uh, please put them in silent mode. Like this, we don't get started in the presentation. And also, uh, last thing, in order to allow people that eventually are interested in the second talk but not in the first, uh, if we go short, we will stop until 11. So this means the first talk starts at 10 and the second at 11. So if there is time in between, maybe not. Igor is telling me that maybe we use up all the time. But if there is a time in between, that just that you know that we will stop on purpose until 11, just to make possible that the people who want to come or the people who want to leave uh, do so. So uh, Igor, if you want to present Dimitri better than me. So, thank you very much. My name is Igor Zakharov. Um, I am from EPFL. That's uh, the part of my uh, involvement at CERN. I also work for a firma called Eurotech, which is involved in high performance computing. Um, so the idea for this talk came up when we realized that uh, there is untapped potential out there in terms of accelerators being already shipped with every computer or virtually every computer in the world. Those are the GPUs uh, and other devices which are used for graphics and can be used for computing as well in a very beneficial manner. Uh, we're not uh, leading here, there. This is already a proven concept, in effect, in a sense. And we want to make it possible for CERN programs also to benefit from this opportunity. Now, uh, why six track uh, and why uh, this particular approach? Um, we have in this group uh, a, what I would call a typical CERN program. Uh, which is uh, known to many of you, maybe for people who do not know, it's a, a modeling simulation of particles going around the accelerator. Uh, it scans over phase space variables and uh, beam parameters to accurately predict under which conditions the beam will be lost. And uh, it's important to know these kind of things because losing particles in superconducting magnets may quench the magnets and you lose uh, uh, the beam and possibly also the magnet as well. So um, this is the modeling. Uh, we do large number of turns, so the program takes very long. And as we scan a huge parameter space, uh, it is a massively parallel uh, job, which is typical for CERN jobs uh, at large. Uh, we do a lot of Monte Carlo studies, as you know. Um, so uh, 
easily possibility to split a single study into several, which is also typical. Uh, we know about the massively parallel approach. Um, and this is why this six track is also used for volunteers computing. For many years, CERN actually pioneered the volunteers computing in the world uh, to distribute the six track study, the accelerator study, between the computers of people who just volunteer their cycles and collect results for the benefit of the science and CERN. Um, now, one of the specific things about six track itself is that uh, with the approach uh, which the team of six track took, it is possible to solve the key issue of numeric compati compatibility of the program among different architectures. This is really the key. Uh, and we will talk about it uh, uh, more. Um, uh, so, um, the program itself um, is uh, nothing special, I would say. It's a Fortran program, like many of them at CERN. Um, to maintain this key uh, numerical compatibility across different architectures, it uses a special uh, library for mathematical functions. Otherwise, it, is, it has heritage in uh, CERNLIP, uh, it uses C routines for many special tasks, as many CERN programs do. Um, it operates in a transparent manner on the batch system at CERN and also in the volunteers' uh, computing world, uh, which is nice. And um, that's what we use to send it around to the PCs out there. Now, altogether, the program itself is small enough to be a vehicle for experimentation as well for what we want to present today. It is how do we take a typical program from CERN like this and make it possible to accelerate it on the special devices like the GPUs. That's uh, why six track as a study vehicle and uh, that's why we're here today in this pa first part of the seminar with an expert in the field. Uh, Dmitry Mikushin is uh, uh, leader and um, um, actually uh, director of parallel, uh, parallel applied parallel computing. Who uh, this is a company which specializes in porting of applications to GPUs. Uh, it is a NVIDIA certified, uh, certified uh, body for uh, uh, studies like this and for uh, seminars like this. And so we invited uh, Dmitry Mikushin to help us with the project, and I am delighted that he is here and uh, happy to extend his expertise to this project. Dmitry, it's to you. Yeah, I have a microphone. Uh, good day, everyone, and uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, Igor already introduced us a, a little bit, uh, so I have little things to add. So, yes, uh, we are a small, a small group providing expertise in the field of uh, GPU training and GPU optimization. Uh, we work since uh, uh, 2009, and uh, we met with, uh, with Igor I think in uh, 2013 on the HPC Advisory Council conference in Switzerland, uh, where he suggested that uh, uh, the techniques uh, that we uh, that we aim to uh, to provide with our tra uh, trainings, especially for uh, for academy, um, could uh, can be potentially uh, utilized in also in in, in CERN. Uh, so. Uh, before we start, um, I must ask um, um, just uh, about about your level of knowledge in uh, GPU GPU computing. Um, who is doing CUDA programming? Okay. Uh, who is who is doing any 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 programming on uh, graphic graphics processing units? Oh, I'm, I, I did some tests, at least on CUDA, not at CL, but not to uh, say to production. Okay. Just okay, you said open OpenCL. So for, the, for the comments, yes, remember, for the comments and replies, please remember to use the microphone like this. Yeah. 
I, I have some experience, uh, but just for trying out uh, on uh, CUDA and OpenCL, in particular, I tried a few kernels uh, uh, by, for instance, using uh, PI OpenCL and PI CUDA to just try out uh, uh, how, how to write a sp simple kernel and how it scales, do some simple, uh, simple tests, but not on production code. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, uh, for me, this means that I should I should probably go into a bit more detail when I'm speaking about uh, GPU architecture or um, general principles. All right. So, um, to start with, um, I guess uh, most of you uh, are using Python or, or Fortran, right? So, um, we've seen it's been, uh, it's been a challenge so far uh, to program in Fortran for GPUs. So, just to give you a, a bit of overview, um, the, the main language for, for GPU computing is, uh, is still uh, C, or actually C++. Uh, OpenCL is also, is also uh, uh, bound, to, uh, bound, bound to C. Um, Fortran is, uh, was um, generally the second, second stage of interest in terms of uh, HPC computing on, on GPUs. Uh, so, for example, mm, the first uh, the first uh, the first uh, GPU CUDA binding for Fortran was released by PGI, uh, PGI I guess, um, about five years ago, and uh, it was intended exactly for for the for the purposes of uh, computational <coughs> physics, uh, and numerical weather prediction, and uh, other other uh, huge uh, numerical codes. Uh, that are that are uh, still bound with uh, with Fortran. So uh, this means that uh, Fortran is not is not is not the first the first focus uh, for for this for this kind of hardware facilities, but uh, but we still can do something to enable uh, to enable GPU computing on Fortran. Um, in particular, we have uh, we have two different approaches. Uh, first one is uh, based on directives. Uh, directives essentially mean uh, that you have uh, that you have your original code, like in like in Fortran, maybe maybe with some d uh, do do loops, and uh, you can simply annotate these do loops uh, with uh, with pragma uh, parallel uh, some directive, uh, saying that you know, that the compiler should do some underneath transformation of uh, of this code uh, into um, into a binary for into a kernel for for GPU. That uh, will be uh, will be uh, will be linked uh, with your main program in the background. So all the details of GPU computing will be will be hidden from from the programmer in this case. So you just you just put a hint for the compiler, and the compiler completely does the job for you. In case of directives, and in case of CUDA, um, in case of CUDA, we uh, we use specific language extensions. Uh, to uh, to program to program GPUs in a, in a very detailed fashion. Uh, for example, um, we specify the the compute grid. We specify the configuration of of, of threads uh, on on the GPU. Uh, what what workloads uh, will will go to which uh, which blocks of threads, and and so and so on. So uh, the difference between these two uh, two groups of directives and CUDA is that for directives you have very fast and um, and uh, very uh, very 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 easy start, uh, but uh, your performance m might be limited by the capabilities of compiler, because the compiler will be responsible for everything uh, what, what will be generated for GPUs. So it does com it completely does the job for you. And in case of CUDA, uh, the opposite. Uh, you completely rely on your on your own knowledge of GPU architecture, so you program everything explicitly, uh, and what, whatever you want. So uh, this means that in case in case of uh, in case of CUDA, in case of explicit uh, GPU programming, you have more degree of freedom. So if you if you are an expert GPU programmer, then you should probably go with this approach because uh, it will it will potentially enable your uh, your more efficiency. On GPU, if you if you know if you know how to utilize it. So uh, directives, uh, OpenACC and OpenMP4 are both available for for Fortran. So that means that means that without without real Fortran programming for GPU, 
you can you can uh, you can already utilize directives uh, to just to transparently offload uh, um, the, uh, the the key bottlenecks uh, the, the 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 key compute kernels of your code uh, on on the on the GPU. So OpenACC is a standard uh, developed by, by uh, Nvidia and uh, Nvidia and company. It also it's also supported by uh, by Cray PGI. Um, in fact, um, in fact, it's similar to OpenMP. Um, uh, I guess you know about OpenMP, do you? Uh, so OpenMP is a standard, is a traditional standard for multi-threaded uh, programming on CPUs, and uh, uh, recently it, it has been extended uh, with a set of uh, directives specific to accelerators. Not only not only NVIDIA but also OpenCL. They all, uh, they all now support specific uh, sets of directives that instruct the compiler to offload uh, computational loops uh, onto, onto accelerators. Uh, we will see uh, examples in the next slides. Uh, so for CUDA, uh, things are a little bit more complicated. If you, uh, if you are a GPU computing expert and uh, uh, you have to work with Fortran, then uh, I'm afraid that CUDA Fortran, which is a proprietary uh, software by PGI, is the is the only is the only choice in in production stage. Uh, so uh, they ship uh, their uh, their own uh, their own view uh, of uh, how 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 CUDA extensions should be um, uh, should be paired with with Fortran language, um, and. Uh, this this is the this is the only provider uh, of uh, of CUDA binaries for Fortran, PGI. Uh, these two are well, it's like a more more hackish approaches. Uh, they they do not exist in in, in production. But uh, if you if you know something about compilers, you you can potentially cook a compiler from from existing compo components to, um, for example, mm, for example to. Uh, uh, to generate the uh, the LVM uh, intermediate uh, language from from Fortran, and then uh, then pipeline this intermediate representation uh, into into a GPU backend uh, that will generate an assembly, and then or uh, for NVIDIA or uh, AMD intermediate language for for AMD. Uh, we actually actually we use uh, we, this kind of approach in uh, in our compiler. Um, uh, in, our, in our company, we also we also develop a compiler. So, uh, in fact, it's it's possible to um, it's possible to to develop some uh, alter alternative products uh, to to CUDA Fortran if it's needed. And also, as a part of this presentation, I will show you how to um, how to make a home homebrew uh, uh, di directives uh, in, in, into 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 your code. If you if you want to have them for some reason, uh, another another also uh, probably way uh, pro probable way of uh, uh, CUDA Fortran binding would be to use an Open64 compiler, uh, also with GCC uh, Fortran front end, and then and then through uh, through Viral uh, intermediate representation as well uh, produce the uh, the PTX assembly. Um, uh, this is the approach uh, uh, used by Nvidia. Uh, some time ago, uh, they recently switched to uh, they recently switched to uh, to LLVM. Okay, so Fortran on GPUs, we have uh, possibility to utilize directives very fast, but uh, probably not with 100% efficiency, and we have explicit uh, CUDA programming. If you, uh, but this comes only with knowledge of architecture and. Uh, uh, Knowledge of pr principles of uh, GPU programming. Uh, so here are here are some examples. Uh, so as you see, uh, OpenACC and OpenMP are probably uh, very very similar, as 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 I said. So here uh, there is Fortran. Here's here's C, but it doesn't matter. Uh, here you ha have ACC kernel loop independent, which means that uh, after this directive, uh, there will be a loop. Uh, that could be mapped on, on GPU kernels, uh, and independent means uh, that there is no dependency between between uh, between iterations in this loop. 
sometimes compiler is uh, is too careful. Sometimes compiler cannot uh, cannot just parallelize this loop be because it uh, it assumes possible um, possible intersection in uh, in address ranges uh, referred by by two uh, by two arrays. So in order to uh, in order to instruct the compiler that uh, everything is okay, you shouldn't worry about anything. Uh, there is also uh, could be a word uh, independent. Uh, OpenMP uh, is very similar, um, a little bit more verbose in this case. So here we have uh, like um, uh, data data lifetime region, uh, the region which defines uh, the lifetime for some uh, for some data items, inputs and outputs. So OpenMP, uh, OMP uh, target means uh, uh, means uh, targeting uh, targeting accelerator, GPU or APU. Uh, data means that we are defining the data region, and uh, we map uh, x vector as an input, and we map uh, y vector as an input plus output. So it's similar to uh, Fortran's uh, intent in and int in intent in out in out, right? So. Uh, these two particular commands instruct the compiler that before going into into this before going into this loop, uh, it has to it has to go through um, it has to allocate memory uh, in the uh, on the GPU, and then transfer the inputs uh, to that memory. Then process this loop, uh, which is a for means parallel loop, and afterwards uh, transfer back uh, the outputs, which is Eric in this case. So in all these programs, uh, we are doing uh, we are doing XP operation. So y plus a by x. So essentially, uh, this these two lines, uh, this, this these two cases are, are similar. So what we are saying here is that is a little bit uh, less specific uh, because in, in case of this compiler, compiler can automatically detect uh, inputs and outputs. So this is this is also possible. So in this case, uh, it detects that uh, y is uh, input and output, and x is an input. And here we specify this explicitly. Uh, now, in case of CUDA Fortran, uh, we do everything explicitly. So uh, this would be uh, if you if you if you never pr uh, programmed in, in in CUDA, never programmed for for GPU, uh, this will be an, an example of. Uh, uh, Simplest, uh, simplest GPU kernel that you can that you can, that you can implement. It, com it it entirely corresponds uh, to, uh, to this uh, uh, to this loop. So there we have a kernel with attribute attributes global, uh, which is called from call XP with this uh, fancy fancy braces. And in these braces we 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 specify the dimensions of compute grid. Uh, compute grid is something similar to uh, to threads in case of CPU. But it could be multidimensional, and it also it's also nested. We have threads, and we have blocks of threads. So it it comes with uh, uh, two levels of hierarchy. And uh, inside inside of uh, inside of uh, kernel, we have um, a computation of uh, i index. Uh, the kernel body is written for every individual thread. So essentially. Uh, 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 the body of the kernel is uh, equivalent to the body of the loop. If we'll strip, uh, if we'll strip the uh, the header, the do the do header and and do foot, footer, so it's essentially the same. Uh, the only thing we need to do is to reconstruct the the li uh, linear uh, i index uh, from uh, from uh, from this uh, uh, threads configuration, and then we need to check that i is in bounds. So. Like uh, like this uh, loop uh, implicitly does uh, does for us here. Uh, so uh, this is this is how how this uh, this these two codes compare. Uh, uh, if you're interested, we provide instructions how to how to assemble an OpenMP4 compiler from open source components. Um, but uh, maybe not that much in focus right now. Uh, well. Examples I just presented to you are toy examples. So uh, this is something we often see from uh, from commercial software developers, uh, uh, developer development companies uh, that do their presentations. They they say like, hey, you you have just 
to add one line and uh, you will be, uh, that, that would be enough and there's nothing else to do and just buy our product and everything will be very simple. Uh, unfortunately, the reality is a little bit more, uh, more difficult. Um, we, we, have to be, um, we have to be aware of, um, of specific problems that happen in our case in, um, in case of uh, huge codes. So, first of all, um, let's look uh, into this uh, diagram of uh, throughputs in, in, typical, in typical system equipped with CPUs and GPU. Uh, for example, like a desktop machine. Uh, as you see, uh, the throughputs between within CPU and its uh, its uh, main memory is uh, uh, quite large. Uh, also, uh, uh, as well as uh, the throughput between between GPU and its local memory. Uh, the problem here is that uh, the PCI Express bridge between uh, between the CPU subsystem and GPU subsystem uh, is just just about nothing compared to compared to these numbers. Factor of uh, factor of ten or factor of one hundred. So uh, the thing to observe here is that if we if we keep our data on CPU, then we compute something, and we and then we want to compute something uh, something with the same data on GPU. We have to transfer this data through this connection. And if we in and and whenever we would like to uh, to uh, mm, to utilize uh, results from that, uh, that computation on GPU again on CPU, we have to we have to do uh, we have to do the opposite connection. So this means uh, that ultimately the speed uh, the performance of our prog uh, of our program is performance of this uh, of this interconnection. Uh, or we have to think about how 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 we can minimize data transfers. So in case of in case of large programs, uh, the the major problem is how how you can how you can keep data on device as long as possible without without any uh, any additional synchronizations, because this this bridge will uh, well it develops. Uh, we see uh, we see new standards are uh, are introduced. For example, PCI Express uh, three or PCI Express four, but uh, but believe me, it will never it will never ever reach uh, the same uh, the same throughput that will be offered uh, between between uh, between the device and its own memory. So um, so if we have six track or or some uh, or an another another uh, large code base, we would probably um, use uh, this snip snippet on the, on the right. We will define a data. Uh, data lifetime region, some, somewhere, let's say, somewhere outside, like uh, like in the main program, and uh, everything uh, that will be inside this region, uh, not necessarily explicitly, it could be also inside external calls from this region, uh, maybe calls to other functions, functions from from another sources, whatever, call, uh, libraries uh, as well. Uh, Every, everything will be uh, will be assuming that this data is already present on GPU. Uh, so you you already you already uh, you already can see uh, uh, the the problem of, of GPU computing here uh, hits uh, hits uh, the the complexity of uh, of, of software. Uh, in order to uh, in order to um, um, let's say uh, accelerate a small portion of of your of your model. Uh, you have to uh, you have to you have to refactor. Uh, in, in fact, you have to refactor the whole code in order to provide efficiency in some in some particular place. Uh, you need to uh, you need to make you, you need to make the data the data transfers eff efficient, and you can't do efficient data transfers without maintaining this uh, this uh, data layout um, uh, globally for entire program. Um, so, uh, what what other things we have uh, in in terms of in terms of large code bases? Um, you know, this is the case of uh, loop with with external code. So, uh, whenever whenever we are uh, assuming 
uh, this, uh, this goes uh, in, uh, onto GPU, let's say with this directive, um, we have to prepare everything that would be called from, uh, from, from this body uh, to be on GPU. It, it depends how, 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 how it should be done in uh, in particular way. For example, in, in, case, of, in case of OpenACC, we need to add <coughs> additional, uh, additional directives also on, on the function header. Or uh, in, case of, in case of CUDA Fortran, we need to annotate the function, uh, function with, uh, with attribute, attribute device. So again, um, let's say we have a large program. Uh, uh, this is the main, and it has dependencies. Then all these dependencies have to be maintained somehow in order to, uh, in order to uh, get the things work all together on GPU. And yes, uh, older, uh, older or simpler OpenAC compilers uh, do not inline very well. So uh, the simplest approach would be just to, just to copy paste that, that code uh, uh, inside, inside this body um, on, on the compiler level. Uh, and uh, we've seen uh, recently PGI OpenACC started to do this. So this is uh, no, longer, no longer that much a problem. Um, the question of performance. Uh, is uh, um, we can uh, we can we can see it on this on this example. So um, uh, let's pick up some array, like for instance, for instance, mm. right. So i j here. So uh, as we know in Fortran, uh, the the fastest index is to the left, right? Um, and uh, you would probably write this, uh, this ordering of loops for CPU in a different way. Uh, what would be the way? So here we have G, I, K. Let's say you have an array access I, I, G, K. You would probably interchange the, the order, right, somehow. So the, the answer would be k, j, i. So the, the most outer will be k, then, then j, then i. So the fastest, the fa the fastest change in index will be, the inner, will be corresponding to the innermost loop, right? That would be for, um, let's say, for at least for caching, right? If you are if you are if you are going if you are going for the same line, it would be favorable in terms of in terms of performance that you you are staying on the same line as long as this line will be cached in the in the in the CPU cache, right? Okay. So and here we see uh, that K is uh, jumping inside inside of here. Um, uh, this uh, uh, this is what we probably would be needed for GPUs. Uh, and that would uh, that would be the the ordering of the best performance in GPUs. Uh, uh, this is this is kind of tricky tricky thing uh, because this means that we that we map onto uh, onto threads only i and j loops, and k loop is within a single thread. So one one thread of GPU is not responsible just for this single iteration. It's responsible for the entire uh, for the entire inner loop. Uh, this way, we um, we kind of uh, this is one way to maximize the, the occupancy, maximize the, the performance of, of a single thread on GPU. Um, so another uh, another question arises. So uh, if we have a if we have a huge code, we have uh, multi-dimensional loops, then we will have to um, then we will have to manually uh, interchange, uh, interchange the loops, still keeping the, the normal order if we want to keep this code uh, being, uh, having performance on CPUs. So you will have uh, code segmentation, right? Okay, so, um, well, uh, all these examples uh, come, uh, come from, from some existing experience. And uh, also, uh, it might be um, might be a nice thing uh, that uh, both examples uh, that we have here in numerical weather prediction are actually uh, actually implemented by people graduated from computational physics. 
So uh, this uh, this Cosmo Cosmo original uh, numerical weather prediction model by uh, by Meteo Swiss uh, is actually a DVD model uh, for CPU ported uh, by uh, mm. uh, by 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 the by their team uh, onto onto NVIDIA GPUs using partial code rewrite and also using using OpenACC. So, but OpenACC has a has a minor role here. Uh, for OpenACC, um, uh, it's only it's only it's only physics, which consumes only 22 uh, percent of, uh, of of program of program runtime. But the the major uh, the major part in terms of runtime uh, was rewritten from Fortran into C++. <coughs> so, this this is the approach they took, uh, and uh, uh, the overall speed up for the for the entire program. Uh, is uh, two, two, uh, two and a half, uh, two and a half, uh, factor of two and a half. Uh, another example is uh, WRF. It's uh, also a, a regional NVP model. It's also Fortran, uh, but a little bit, uh, a little bit worse in terms of quality. Uh, I would say, uh, I would say, Cosmo model code is a, is a, uh, the the most the most spectacular. Uh, in engineered uh, code in Fortran, to, to our experience. Uh, uh, and in case of WRF, uh, the recent study by, uh, by NVIDIA engineers uh, showed that partial port of physics uh, in OpenACC resulted into uh, up to four and a half uh, factor speed up of uh, isolated selected code blocks. Isolated selected code blocks here is a magic, a magic sentence, means, uh, meaning that that problem of, of, data, uh, of data transfers through the, through the slow PCI Express interface was not addressed. They simply took, uh, they simply took some code segment, annotated it with, uh, with, uh, with simple pragmas, and their data, or whenever they compute something, it goes back and forth through, the, through, the, through this PCI Express bus, and they do not account the times of transfers. So uh, this, is, uh, this is something that you can, you can easily produce, but uh, in terms of uh, in terms of amount of work done, uh, the the Cosmo is a, is a complete port. It's a complete port on GPU, and WRF is just uh, uh, is just a uh, just a test study, let's say. And uh, it's like uh, one one thousand miles from from this state uh, to this state. Okay, so. Um, Coming closer to our uh, our sixth track problem problems, uh, let's let's say uh, let's say a word about uh, things and the features in Fortran that cannot be cannot be directly ported uh, ported on GPU. Uh, one good example is uh, common blocks. Uh, common blocks uh, is a Fortran 77. Uh, there is no support for common blocks in Code of Fortran and OpenACC. Uh, there is no choice but to write all common blocks as models. Fortunately, it's uh, like, a, uh, like a technical procedure. There is uh, no, much, uh, no much to think about. It just has to be done carefully with, with maintaining some, um, uh, some uh, correctness checks. Um, interleaved uh, computing and uh, I.O. So by Interleaved computing at I.O. I means that six track is a kind of program that um, uh, that often prints something in the middle of uh, of computing something, and uh, I don't think that we can easily alter this behavior uh, without without contacting contacting the developers, and uh, I feel that developers will be un uncomfortable with. Uh, if we will enforce them to uh, to stick with some particular way of, of programming, I just want to print something in the middle of my loop. I don't care. Uh, just give me uh, uh, give me an HPC system or give me uh, give me a di directives uh, co compiler with directives that will allow me to do so, right? So uh, instead of uh, getting uh, um, getting rid of uh, of uh, of this of these constructs, uh, we decided to to let them go, just to keep them as as they are. Um, unfortunately, um, we we cannot we cannot keep them exactly in the form they are coded, 
but uh, um, uh, just to refactor them a little bit, but keeping them, uh, keeping them still in place. Um, we can simulate uh, formatted output. So Cura Fortran by itself, um, I don't know, maybe that, that was not in focus for PGI, they don't have format, formatted output. Uh, they, they, you, can, you can do print star, print star star, that, that would work in, in, in GPU kernel. But you, but you cannot do this right with format. Um, in, uh, in CUDA C++, there is printf for, for, for kernels. Actually, in CUDA C++, unlike in Fortran, you can do arbitrary printfs uh, with arbitrary formats. Uh, but in case, of, in case of CUDA Fortran, you can do only, only uh, a, plain, a plain print statement. So what we did, we just, um, we just implemented Fortran formatted I.O. in software. We just implemented in our, uh, by, uh, by hand uh, the, the library call that will, uh, that will extend uh, CUDA Fortran to provide, uh, uh, to provide formatted, formatted AO. It's a bit, it's a bit uglier, of course, in, in terms of language, in terms of usage. Um, we, we cannot introduce a new statement of language, right? Or we cannot uh, override the existing statement. So what we can do is to do this in software and uh, implement it in a, in, a very, uh, in a very simple and uh, intuitive way. Um, um, we provide, uh, we provide a buffer in GPU memory. Uh, then we uh, accumulate all prints from all threads that are running on GPU. And whenever we, whenever, let's say, we reach a timeout or whenever we reach uh, this, uh, the capacity of this, bu of this buffer, we just flush it to, to CPU. And on CPU, uh, the actual formatting is performed. And then, uh, th then the output is printed. So uh, in, in, in this way, uh, the output is, is a little bit asynchronous. So it doesn't happen uh, whenever, whenever, you call, whenever you call write statement. But it will definitely happen sometime, some, sometime in the future for, for all threads altogether. Um, OK. So uh, the next problem we faced was, uh, was about still about common blocks or model related things, we had to think about um, same layouts for, 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 for data on, on GPU and on CPU. The issue is that um, uh, Fortran language is not specifying very well how, um, how, the, how the data fields in model um, uh, have to be aligned in memory. What would be the paddings? What would be the alignments? Uh, what would be even the order uh, of uh, of data fields uh, in each particular model? Uh, so what we so what we had to do is to is to um, to create an exact correspondence between the laid layout on on uh, in GPU memory and the layout on on CPU memory. Uh, this is a very handy thing. This means that uh, once you have this uh, equivalent layouts. Uh, you can uh, you can copy the the entire model uh, model data from from CPU to GPU and back just with one command, and uh, you will be completely sure that uh, that the offset from the beginning of beginning address of the model for a particular variable, let's say EPS, will be will be the same for CPU and for GPU, and you will definitely find it where you expect it to find. So. Uh, for instance, we have, an, we have a running experiments with, uh, with, with particles, and we decided that uh, uh, too, uh, too, too many particles are lost, and we are, uh, we do, we are no longer expect efficiency on GPU. So fine, then we can just copy the entire state of, uh, of, this, of this experiment from, from GPU uh, to back to CPU as long as uh, it completely correspond, uh, corresponds in terms of layout, and then continue, continue on CPU. Uh, the same thing when we do, when we do uh, an initialization, we can initialize with uh, whatever assimilation or observation uh, preprocessing things uh, you, might, you, might, you might additionally develop for six track, because we know the six track is not static, it's developed uh, all, all the time. So you, you, can, you can still uh, develop additional things on CPU, then the data will be populated 
uh, copy the entire model on CPU, and then it will be, it will be working on GPU. Uh, the, the core of the model will be working on GPU. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the, way, uh, the way to maintain this is uh, ESOC binding. Uh, maybe, maybe you, uh, I guess, uh, almost definitely you know what is this. It's, it's uh, the, uh, the, mo the model for Fortran that enables uh, you to interact uh, between Fortran and other languages, let's say. First of all, with C. It provides types, uh, it provides uh, things like function pointers and uh, uh, everything which is needed to, uh, uh, to interface between, between Fortran and other languages. <coughs> so uh, this model also has tools uh, that we can, we can use to, uh, to enforce particular alignments. But not all of them, uh, so we have, we have the ordering here and we have naming. And uh, then uh, somewhere in the, on our compilation rules, we, we still have to enforce the alignments. So alignments are enforced on assembly level. Uh, thread safety. So um, going a little bit forward uh, for, for this case, um, we, we are aiming to do ensemble simulation with, with six track. Not, not, just, not just a single experiment, we, we are aiming to do ensembles. Um, given that we want ensembles, um, we face the following issue. Um, model in Fortran is just like a, it's like a single tone. It's, um, it's just a single instance in memory. Y you don't have uh, language features, uh, well, except, uh, except Fortran, Fortran classes, but I don't know, I don't know anybody who, who is, who's using classes in Fortran. Uh, so model is not, is not a C++ class. We cannot easily clone it. We cannot easily uh, uh, replicate uh, copies in order to, um, um, let's say, in order to, in order to have multiple experiments of six track in a single in a single uh, program body. In our case, right? So, uh, in these terms, uh, the the data containers used by uh, six track Fortran program are not thread safe. We cannot we cannot utilize uh, the the way the way the containers are are designed. Uh, by more than by more than one by more than one thread. So with with existing design, we c we cannot even do a multi-threaded program if we if we want if we want to dedicate uh, one thread to to one experiment. Uh, so uh, we have nothing to do but to uh, to provide an individual instance of uh, experiment state for for every experiment in our ensemble. So the question is how to how to do this in an easy way without without refactoring uh, the whole program. Uh, well, um, uh, the brute force approach will be just I don't know um, transform all these colors into arrays, where the dimension of array is the is the number of uh, experiments in a cell, right? That would be, but that would be a mess. That, uh, that would introduce an, an, an additional index on the 200,000 uh, lines of code. So it's, uh, well, it cannot be afforded uh, uh, in, in, any, in, any, in any future. So uh, this doesn't, definitely doesn't work for us. So uh, that's why we are going for more, well, more low level, more, more haggish approach. We, we clone the space for data sets uh, using low level tweaks. Um, so in fact, we, um, we, 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 we can always get into the, into the running binary, uh, binary executable, retrieve, um, uh, let's say, retrieve the, uh, the starting address of the model, and then um, like allocate space, uh, the, the, same, the same amount of, of space for this model and clone this model to that, uh, to that free space. So that would be like a low-level workaround. So in terms of Fortran program, we will, sti we will s still see uh, a single instance. But uh, uh, on the low level, uh, on the level of our runtime library, we can cook something um, to make it to look like we have a single model instance for every experiment. Uh, yeah, that would be essential if you, if you, want, to, if you want to keep the code unchanged. Um, so, how much time do we have? The, the project can continue, I mean, except if 
New people is coming anyway, is going to come to the end of the first talk. So oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me, sorry, I'm, um, I feel I am a little bit slower, uh, but, uh, but still, uh, I will continue with, uh, with, uh, with our issues uh, um, with, respect to, with respect to six track, but also, um, also important in, uh, in, in, in generic uh, Fortran uh, GPU code programming. Uh, so, the main question is uh, probably you're already wondering why we are doing ensemble. Why we are doing ensemble if, um, um, if we, let's say, if we have MPI, right? If we have MPI, we can, we can MPI run uh, like 1,000 instances of, uh, of a single six-track program, and then uh, they all will be, uh, will be done uh, also in, in, in ensemble in a very easy, in a very easy way. Um, the thing is that um, on, on GPU, we cannot do, uh, we cannot do uh, multi -pro um, multiple processes. Uh, we can do multiple kernels with, uh, with some hardware limitations, um, but that would be still not enough for us. Why not enough? Uh, here on, uh, on the right-hand side, we have, um, um, we have the architecture of, uh, of Maxwell GPUs, the, which is the most recent GPU uh, architecture re released by NVIDIA so far. Um, as you see, this, uh, this uh, uh, green squares are compute cores. Uh, the, larger, uh, the larger containers are, are blocks. And the larger containers are SMMs, uh, like uh, symmetric multiprocessors uh, for Maxwell. <coughs> uh, so from this picture, you can already guess that uh, the, the amount of compute units that we have in this kind of devices is really huge. We cannot, um, we, we cannot load uh, this, uh, um, this, uh, uh, this, 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 this amount of uh, compute power with just a single loop of, uh, let's say, 64 particles. It would consume just maybe 2 or 4% of the compute power of the GPU. Will be just burning, uh, burning electricity. That would be that would be nothing. Also in terms of performance. Um, so, uh, but that's the only uh, the only explicit parallelism that we can that we can derive from the existing program. The parallelism of particles. So we have we have some degree of parallelism, but that parallelism is not enough to uh, to provide enough workload for GPU efficiency. Uh, we basically need uh, more parallel jobs, and uh, the easiest uh, the easiest uh, way to get more parallel jobs is to run multiple instances of six track, right? So our only question is how to, how to refit the how to refactor the existing program in a way that it will contain uh, multiple instances of itself with different configurations, of course. That that, that you might need, I guess, uh, uh, experiments with a little bit uh, or completely different uh, initial, initial conditions, for instance. Right? So we don't have enough, pr enough parallelism just for, from particle loops. Uh, uh, if uh, one thread is handling, uh, handling a single particle, uh, then we will consume up to two warps. So 64 threads on, on GPU, it's nothing. It's, it's enough for CPU, but for GPU, in, uh, 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 given its uh, completely different architecture, uh, it's nothing. So, um, uh, since we need at least several hundred warps uh, to be utilized, uh, we, we are going to run multiple experiments in the same time uh, that hopefully uh, uh, will, will load GPU um, in, in, more, in more efficient fashion. So, um, the next question is how to map uh, this ensemble of multiple experiments uh, onto GPU compute grid. So, uh, this picture again presents, uh, uh, again presents uh, the, uh, this two-level hierarchy of, uh, of threads in, in, in GPU. We have a block. Block is something similar to traditional multi-threading on CPU. So just block with threads. Threads 
uh, of, uh, from, from one to uh, up to, up to 1,000 in this case. Uh, the, uh, the block itself could be also multidimensional. So uh, in order to provide more, um, more comfort in, uh, in mapping to multidimensional loops, uh, CUDA uh, was originally coming with, uh, with possibility to create uh, multidimensional, uh, multidimensional thread mappings. Um, so one dimension, two dimension, or three dimensions. And these blocks are themselves in another grid of, of grid of blocks. So that would be the, uh, the, sec the second level, hierarchy. Uh, so our, our question is, okay, we have multiple instances of six track. Uh, we, want, we would probably want to still utilize multiple threads for loops uh, on, on particles uh, within, within each individual, individual instance, right? And, but we still need to map uh, these uh, multiple instances of six track onto something here on this grid or block, or we, we are not completely sure how, how to do this. So what possibilities do we have? A uh, single GPU kernel for each experiment. So we have a single program, but, uh, but every, every kernel, uh, every, every experiment uh, runs, uh, runs a, an, a, an independent kernel. So uh, this is still places a limitation uh, on us um, because, uh, yes, we can, do, we can launch uh, multiple parallel kernels, like, like in case of CUDA Fortran, uh, on a single GPU. But unfortunately, uh, the number of simultaneous kernels is limited to 64 on Maxwell. So 64 by two warps, each kernel will be of two warps. It's, it's still not enough, still not, not enough workload. So um, uh, not a way to go. And um, uh, more tricky uh, thing to do would be to have a single block for, for each experiment within a shared kernel. So we will have, uh, remember that small uh, Saxby kernel of Code of, uh, with Code of Fortune on this uh, initial examples I show? So now there would be a single kernel for the entire six track model. Would be entire, uh, entire six track model will be inside the kernel. And, uh, Every, every instance will, be, uh, will occupy just a single block. And uh, our, our six tracks will be just this. Six tracks, six tracks, six tracks, six tracks. The grid of six tracks. So essentially we, um, essentially we re-implement the, the, uh, the LHC at home uh, in, the scale of sing in the scale of single GPU. So, uh, in terms of nature of, uh, of grid computing, we, we, are just, we are just providing a fat node. So, instead of a single user with, uh, with a single instance of six track, uh, we, we are saying, okay, we have more compute power on GPU. In order to fit the existing interface, uh, we, can, uh, we can assume that uh, this, this is a, like a grid of users, grid of users, and they are uh, providing results for multiple experiments in the same time. So, yes, question? This would assume that you can run the whole six-track program entirely on GPU. Yes, so, yeah, I'm, 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 about, to, I'm about to continue this in, in more detail. Exactly. So, uh, one experiment uh, occupies one, broke, uh, one block, no, no more any hardware limits uh, related to multiple, multiple simultaneous kernels. Uh, and uh, that would provide enough parallelism to, uh, to, load, to load all compute units. Um, uh, the question, however, here is, um, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, so still, yeah, so this, this on this slide. Um, still, uh, we, have, uh, we have a degree of freedom uh, whether we would like to, uh, to um, to share, um, to have a shared kernel just for a single loop, every every single loop, or we would like to have the single kernel uh, for the for the, for the entire model. That was your question, right? So, um, we believe that uh, it will. Well, sorry. Yeah, unfortunately. 
Um, that would uh, that would unfortunately give us uh, stalls for for synchronization after each kernel launch. So just imagine how much how much small uh, loops on uh, on particles we we have in our program, and after every every such loop we'll have a synchronization, meaning that we will wait for for GPU um, uh, to finish to finish the kernel launch, right? Um, and uh, moreover, if uh, if our experiments, our our configurations are too different uh, in between the in between this ensemble, every every let's say fast experiment will be waiting for the slowest one, right? So, um, in terms of synchronization, in terms of uh, in terms of waiting times, we will still uh, lose a lot of compute power. So. Um, yeah, but we actually don't need to synchronize between experiments, right? Every experiment is independent, and uh, this uh, these synchronizations are um, they, they are useless. They're just spending our time. Um, and the alternative would be a single a single kernel for this for the whole extract code, as uh, um, as, as we wanted to discuss, right? So in this case, uh, each experiment is computed independently. Um, without stalls or synchronization, so our our stall will be just in the in the end of the model lifetime, the the single stall. Um, still, the problem arises. Um, our code is composed from both serial and uh, parallel code portions, right? So we have we have loops, and we have the code which is in between of loops. Uh, we have to deal with this somehow, because um, if we will assume that uh, our six-track model just go, goes on, on a single block, uh, then every thread will be executing uh, executing every line of the code, which which means that serial portions will be will be incorrectly executed multiple times. Right, so we either uh, we will either have to provide the complete thread safety, which is not possible. Or we will have to filter somehow um, additional threads um, on on serial core portions, right? So uh, this is uh, here the, the the another technology we implemented. Um, well, just to explain you uh, on this on this basic example, um, this is a code snippet, uh, some serial code, serial code, and here in between we have we have parallel code. Uh, this entire thing goes on GPU. It goes it goes for for all threads of a single block, meaning that the serial code will be called by every thread. That will obviously bring our uh, our code into in incorrect incorrect state. So what we have to do is on like on that right hand side, we have to we have to we have to provide that if we are doing this as a single thread, then we call in serial code, then we do uh, then we do a do loop. Somehow, well, of course, do uh, do goes away. We no longer have do uh, uh, inside inside of thread. Uh, then again, serial portion, and we again uh, are setting up a condition that uh, this code portion will be executed only uh, only once on one thread of block. So uh, again, uh, we are facing uh, we are facing the problem of code refactoring, right? So uh, coming to this step, we have to uh, we have to look through uh, all our code base and um, um, refactor it in this in some similar way. Just detect all all serial code portions and uh, filter them with additional uh, if conditions. Well, yes. This also means that you'll have to synchronize before you go into parallel section. Absolutely. Yeah, but as long as as long as we are we are doing this uh, uh, synchronize, you mean after parallel section? Synchronization after every serial one, because you don't you expect that the one who goes into parallel will will have the results ready, so everybody will yeah, have that, to wait until would, the serial. That that would happen automatically. If this is the GPU code, they will wait until the serial. Sammy, Sammy. 
use the microphone. If the right hand side is inside the GPU, the, the threads will not go uh, after the end if they are blocked. All threads go with the same step every time. So they are masked, they are not going anywhere. The threads are not independent in the GPU. Well, right. So um, I, 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 I also, also, uh, also agree that uh, synchronizations here um, are not necessary. Um, since, uh, since we are working within, within, a, single, within a single block, um, well, in special cases, well, if you, if you are still expecting the need of synchronization, we can limit with a single warp. If we are doing a single warp of 32 threads, uh, they are executing, um, uh, they are executing uh, as, as one just by, by the architecture, architecture design. They are executing as one, as one, and no one will be executing uh, before uh, before the, the the previous line is finished. So, as 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 you, as you said, that's that's possible to archive. So, uh, our main problem is uh, how do we um, how do we uh, how do we plan how do how to overcome the need of uh, major code refactoring again. So this is. Uh, this is uh, all, uh, all about uh, we are thinking here. Mm. So again, we are doing something in low level. Um, remember uh, that possibilities of constructing uh, constructing compilers from from uh, with Fortran front end, LLVM middle end, and the GPU back end. So here we again uh, utilize this knowledge to intercept. Um, Let's say intercept the the output of NVCC CUDA compiler, in order to um, in order to um, in order to insert this if branching automatically by compiler. So what we have to do is by hand is to annotate all parallel loops, just with something that we can parse with with our compilers. So we we introduced we introduced part do part do or something. Uh, in, in our code, so this part do uh, is um, is converted to is converted to function call. So we have the function call here start region, function call end region, and this region is locked as parallel. And then we uh, then we uh, we capture uh, the intermediate um, <coughs> intermediate way uh, intermediate representation of compiled code from the from the CUDA compiler uh, without this if branching. And then by parsing our uh, by parsing our hints here, we can we can introduce this uh, this branching branches, just just by uh, uh, just by utilities available from from compiler infrastructure. So as long as this process could be automated, uh, this uh, this if uh, filters uh, could be set automatically, um, we utilize this uh, at compiler level. So. Uh, an annotated code executes in parallel for each thread of block. So uh, these this annotations are essentially uh, stripping the, the loop body and it's executed by, by every single thread. Okay, so uh, the conclusion for this, for, for this part, uh, a, bit, a bit late, uh, unfortunately, that the code has to be modern, modernized at least to Fortran 90. With Fortran 77, we can hardly uh, uh, start to work immediately. So um, I think um, several several initial weeks uh, with our development were spent uh, just just on refactoring to Fortran 90. And uh, afterwards, um, we were facing the problem that that we would like to use CUDA Fortran. Yes, it's uh, that's only one available alternative. Yes, it's uh, proprietary but it still enables us to, to start with something. And it's still missing some, uh, some important features in our case, like uh, formatted I.O. and also uh, multi, uh, like, uh, strings, well, multi-character multi uh, character arrays, uh, also, also not available in CUDA Fortran. Uh, so we had to overcome this uh, by introducing these things in, in software. Uh, ensemble simulations are crucial for uh, for GPU performance. Uh, the ensemble simulations is the way uh, for us to um, to deliver to deliver performance from GPU. 
Uh, this still fits uh, the design of LH LHC at home. We're just providing the, the FET node, uh, which is able to produce, uh, to produce uh, six track results uh, as if it was uh, a group of users. And uh, compiler can be cost customized to, uh, uh, to provide interleaved uh, parallel, and, uh, parallel and serial code for us. Uh, since we, we choose uh, this, um, uh, this instance to, uh, to block mapping, where, where we have the code by default executed by all threads uh, uh, in, inside and outside of parallel loops. Uh, this presentation, I guess, will be provided uh, uh, to, to attendees, so just, just to focus your attention for the moment. Uh, this enabling on-the-fly manipulation with LLVM IR code for of CUDA sources uh, is like a sub-project we, we developed uh, we developed in order to provide this uh, this low-level compiler facility. Uh, you you can go to the GitHub uh, project site and then uh, read more if you're interested. Also, the open-source LLVM-based op OpenMP4 compiler is open-source, meaning it's free. Uh, you can you can immediately do OpenMP uh, on NVIDIA GPUs if you want. Also, the references to, uh, uh, to existing, existing uh, Fortran uh, works uh, with numerical weather prediction models. Okay, and uh, in the second part, we will go through a little bit more technical details uh, for, for six-track current state. And uh, it, would be, it would be super useful if, uh, if we'll accumulate some feedback uh, from, uh, from attendees on, um, uh, on, on how we modified the, the current code base. Because I guess uh, at some point we'll have to, we'll have to uh, return, uh, return our contribution, our branch, back to the main line, uh, which means that we would like to uh, hear your feedback. Okay, so thank you.